exciting that countdown. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. It is 11 o'clock in the morning in Brighton. Hello, Julian Caddy, the director of Brighton Fringe. Hello. 12 p.m. here in Amsterdam and Prague. I'm Steve Gove, and this is Auke Verhoeg from Amsterdam. Hi. And good evening to Perth. Amber Hassler, the Festival Director of Fringe World in Perth, Western Australia. So as far as I know, this is the first ever live Zoom panel discussion of Fringe Directors, which is super exciting. And we're going to just jump straight in because we all could probably talk for about the next 17 and a half hours. There's a lot to say. So I'm going to jump straight in and introduce Amber again, say hi, and uh, tell us your experience of this whole crazy, crazy few months. You guys managed to deliver a full festival by the skin of your teeth. Indeed, thank you. Um, yeah, so Perth Fringe World uh, Festival wrapped up in mid-February uh, and it was just at the beginning of, of COVID starting to make its way around, around the world. And I guess perhaps yeah, we feel incredibly lucky but also felt incredibly sad and devastated for our, for our fallen friends, um, for those festivals that... Um, really were in the in the thick of it. Melbourne Comedy Festival, Brighton, Prague, Edinburgh, Orlando. You know, these are these are some real Amsterdam, some real festivals that um, this is completely unprecedented. So, um, Fringe World did feel uh, it was a wonderful festival, and uh, we were very pleased with with how it wrapped up. But we have been sit watching watching the world grapple and the industry really try to figure out what the new normal is and how we will return to presenting festivals. And I think um, as a collective, we're in a really interesting position to kind of lead the way on what, what opportunities we're able to offer our artists, um, how we engage with audiences, suddenly bringing uh, heightened levels of safety and, and comfort to, to the forefront of people's experience within a festival context will be really, really interesting. And I guess for us, we saw an opportunity to acknowledge that our artists and our sector were really suffering during this time. You know, I think um, we know that artists lost an incredible amount of work and opportunities and, you know, a whole year has been taken off the table for people to earn. Um, and that has been a real, a real difficult thing for us to watch. We, we did a little bit to help with our ISO Fringe, which was a platform that we offered our artists, free of charge to artists, to present their, their things to their Fringe audience, their Fringe World audience. You know, our audiences here are so loving and into festival culture. Um, we had a range over, I think, six weeks where we presented over 20 different artist offerings, be it merchandise, be it a um, link to um, a website or a, a kind of web series where people can engage with those artists direct. And, you know, it was, it was, it was small, but it was also an opportunity for us to say, hey, you know, these, these people who create these things that you love, you still need to support them more than ever here and now, even though it doesn't feel like... Um, the festival that we're kind of used to and um, from our team's perspective we've really focused in on so many different scenarios of what the future can look like you know and it is still changing day by day in terms of relaxation of relaxation of restrictions and border closings and those kinds of things so time will tell I mean we're still we are hoping that in June we're going to have a bit more information to release with artists about what our plans for 2021 look like. We do know that we will have a fringe world in 2021, be it some some kind of variation on what we've what we've seen and, and known before. And we're using this time now to gather support and um, create programs that ultimately will support our artists to return to fringe world, be it um, taking into consideration. The cash flow and the money opportunity you know how do we how do we allow artists who haven't made anything um over a whole year's period to still access and, and participate and how do we support artists to make work to present on the on the platform of fringe these are our two two really big focuses at the moment fantastic 
Uh, okay, you, <clears throat> your fringe in Amsterdam isn't till September. So um, uh, what, how are you doing in terms of preparing for that? Because September is still quite early in terms of um, nobody really knowing what, what's going on. Yeah, I think exactly the latter. Nobody is really knowing what's going on has been um, <clears throat> the most difficult part in organizing a festival because uh, from the start it has been unclear when we went in lockdown uh, beginning of March. Um, will we be still in a lockdown in September? Do you need to cancel immediately? Um, or will that be the moment, and this is everybody's wish, and it seems that uh, that will be more likely scenario that we can start the cultural season again, say it in a different form with less audience uh, and keeping distance. Um, but uh, we've made many, many scenarios of being completely canceled, going completely online, um, taking place like we thought we would take place, all these kind of things. And it's been a crazy amount of work readjusting uh, because every scenario that you make um, a week later, there's a press conference and you have to make a new one. Uh, so it's been quite a ride so far. Uh, at the moment, the Dutch government has sort of this roadmap of how they want to open up society. So that gives um, that, that gives a guideline to start organize something. So for Amsterdam Fringe, we are now steering towards uh, a hybrid festival, whatever that means. So both with works and performances that take place uh, in real life, in theaters and in site-specific venues, uh, as well as uh, presenting online work, uh, but mostly work that have been uh, created for the screen and not so much live streaming performances because uh, from we've been in conversation with all our artists uh, quite intensively. Uh, and there's not that much uh, interest in live streaming performance if you can have the real deal too, even if it's for smaller audiences. Mm -hmm. So our focus is how can we make it happen in real life as much as possible. Um, but yeah, the capacity of the festival will be half of last year maximum. That um, it, it does have quite some consequences also on the financial side, like Amber mentioned that is the biggest worry that we have and uh, has been the biggest puzzle so far. How can we make it worthwhile for these artists that suddenly had no work at all, also no side jobs, all the restaurants were closed, all the dance lessons cannot take place, all these kind of things. So um, how do you deal with that and provide a platform that makes sense in these times? Uh, Julian, like uh, ourselves here in Prague, you were sort of poised at the button, ready to go. And in fact, you'd actually gone on sale and your printed brochures were ready to be distributed. I can't even begin to imagine the horror of seeing those and then knowing that the festival wasn't going to happen. So what's, uh, what's happening with Brighton? You've been doing bits online and are you still planning to reschedule in for October? Um. Well, we, we, we're still planning to schedule for for October, but the, it really is similar to Alkia, really. We, we don't know what that looks like. We've got up around 300 um, shows keen to do something in the autumn. Just what that will be and what the, um, the, the format of that will be really depends on what is possible at the time so we're, we're going to have to be able to be very mobile in how we activate things um and and uh, I, I i think that audiences there is an appetite for people from from the public to see work um but it just needs to be really carefully put together in a, in a way which is which is which is prudent and um and, and fits fits all the the appropriate guidelines um we did take an enormous hit. Um, the brochure wasn't just printed; it was distributed. We we, dis we, we had it out in in uh, on in across the across the city and around the region, um, and we'd sold a significant amount of tickets already as well. Um, so it was it's been a case of unpicking the process. Um, a lot of the audiences have been kind enough to convert their um their tickets to donations um and we're of course keen for that to continue um and the 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 artists have been also incredibly patient as we've been down to a skeleton staff now so we're, we're everything everything's been moving much much slower 
um, ever since the, the mid-March um, uh, beginning of the lockdown. So it, it's, it's been a very slow process. And, and at, at a time when we need investment, um, we have our least amount of money. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, that, that there needs to be um, a, a much bigger digital presence um, for us all, I think, um, going forward. And I don't think it's just for the next next year. I think it'll be um, our new normal um, for years to come. I think that the, the digital the digital side is going to be massive. Yeah, it's an interesting one. We we uh, originally when we um, you know we were given the choice of uh, you know battling ahead because our, our, the Czech Republic actually closed down, one of the first countries in Europe to, to lock down um, in its entirety. And <clears throat> we didn't know what, you know, uh, how the rest of Europe would be at that point. So we didn't think at that point, we thought maybe we won't do anything online. But I had a question, you know, how much is too much online? I mean, we've now done six days of online stuff and we're feeling that we're just really overwhelming people with, with information and and uh, what, what what's the answer to that question, Amber? Oh, look, I think I think um, you know the the incredibly quick response we've seen from people being able to present on a streaming service or online was was amazing. You know, and I I I've seen plenty of work during during the lockdown um, due to people being able to to broadcast and put things online. However, I think, um, you know, for an, for an industry or, a, a, you know, a kind of art form that isn't used to capturing their work digitally and, you know, it's not part of, you know, we're used to presenting it live and live performance. Um, so to have that kind of back catalogue to be able to pull out, there wasn't, you know, not everyone's been able to do that. And I think it's genuinely competed with Netflix and all of those streaming services, you know, and television and movies and all of those things. And, you know, I'd, I'd like to think that that's been a really positive response and that people have, have continued to engage with performance via these services and made donations to artists and paid for tickets and paid for access and things. Um, I, don't think it's, I don't think it's the only thing that can, can be the answer moving forward, you know, how we work, how we find an audience that's safe for our artists and safe for the audiences and how we play that, I think, as an industry is something we're going to have to look to of how our festivals can support that, um, you know, mm -hmm. what, are the, what are the options there? Do we bring the audience to the artist, you know, promenade? And all of these things, you know, have, have a million questions behind it. Um, but I do think this is the future of, of, you know, opportunity for artists to be able to create work that sits outside of the theatre. And we also, as an industry and a sector, need to figure out how we reactivate our stages. You know, all of these theatres around the world, how do we, whatever the rules are, be it, uh, you know, capacity restrictions or social distancing restrictions, you know, how do we get bums on those seats for our artists and make it viable. And, you know, I, I look forward to us all putting our heads together and figuring out what that, mm. what that looks like. And it will take such an effort, venue managers and producers and artists all kind of coming together to, to reactivate that. And, you know, I don't think, I don't think streaming will be the only, the only option. I'm really interested in Amsterdam's um, kind of, beginning of thought of how you how you're able to do that are you speaking with lots of artists about adjusting work or creating new work to to work in a different format yes uh, very much so so we uh i think one week before the lockdown we announced the selection of this year because for amsterdam fringe we make a selection uh, because we have anyway a limited capacity of the number of shows that we can present um and this was just announced uh, right before the lockdown happened. So um, in that moment, we could, for example, also not scale down anymore or not without um, sort of breaking up with people. Um, and this has been the feeling um, all along that we, we do this, we are already in the boat together. So we've been in intensive dialogue with all our artists, with all our venues. Um, how do you look at the future? What is possible? In the Netherlands, there's this magical term at the moment, which is the one and a half meter society. 
um, this is how we go out of this lockdown. Everything should be one and a half meter distance proof. But what does that mean uh, when you have a dance performance and you have a duet and two people should be touching? Um, because also the people on stage need to tend to the one and a half meter distance. Uh, what does it mean for your comedy show um, that sort of needs this uh, vibe of people together uh, laughing, um, being Packedly, uh, closely packed together, having this underground vibe in a, a theater. And now suddenly there's two meters between you and the next person. Um, will you still have the same sense of a theater? And um, I think in the beginning here in the Netherlands, there were it was also the start of the festival season. March is the start of our festival season. So quite a few festivals had to be canceled right away. Um, and uh, a lot of their artists and these festivals try to do things online. And in the first weeks, everybody was super excited about this. And oh my God, it's amazing that we can still have things that it goes on. Um, but after a while, you could also sense there's a little bit of an exhaustion. Uh, and and uh, that it points out what we cannot have right now, uh, being together in one space and uh, that that actually is what's at stake uh, at performance in performance works and in the performing arts. That is what makes it special that you had to be there. Um, and uh, how do you create that in a different way online and just simply having a streaming of a show does not always recreate that. Um, you need a different formatting and not all performance artists are made for that. So with Fringe, we said, okay, let's, we had this big brainstorm with our team, uh, focusing, stopping, thinking of all that we lost or that we cannot do and see, okay, within this is the new reality. What can we do and what do we want to do? Like that it doesn't feel like the B version um, of what you would usually see. So we came up with a lot of crazy ideas that we will not be able to realize all uh, because reality, but um, things like um, peep show theater, because that is a beautiful cubicle format that can happen. It's very disinfected proof, uh, but also long distance theater, or uh, you're not allowed to throw parties at the moment in the Netherlands, but we really want to throw a stay in your bubble party. Uh, all these kind of things just to keep the inspiration going and with that sort of mindset we went back to the artist and said okay we just want to make things happen mm -hmm. we don't know yet what is possible or how it can be done but how do you look at your performance when that is the attitude and for some people it's uh, it means okay I will not present this show because that's uh, I've been thinking about this and working about on this for five years I cannot change uh, that, but maybe I can present then a monologue that I do find interesting or I would very much be interested in presenting outdoors or um, all these kind of things. So these conversations we've been had, uh, having the past couple of weeks, uh, months even, also with our venues, what is possible, how can we make it not look empty but in Dutch we say gezellig, so cozy, um, so that it's still a lovely night out. And from there we go and that it will be completely different. Yeah, that's for sure, but. These harrowing pictures of uh, opera houses with like almost no seats in the stalls. It's just like so depressing. But I mean, mm -hmm. how do, I mean, it's, I mean you, you talked there about, you know, the intimacy of a comedy show and stuff. So many fringe venues are so tiny. I mean, we've got a venue that seats 20 people. Now, what does that mean if they have to be a meter and a half apart? That, that maybe just can't happen. You know, it's. Um, what, in terms of, I, mean, I know things are changing every day, but do are there any closures of venues or, or um, uh, places that you work with already that, that you know of? Yeah. Yeah. So in Amsterdam, we've had a few venues uh, right from the start say, okay, we love you guys, but if we can open, we want to open with commercial parties right. because this is how we can earn our money back and fair enough, completely fair enough. Uh, and some other venues, uh, like you said, that are so tiny that, um, yeah, including the including the people on the stage and the technicians, um, you can have 15 people in the house. What does that mean, um, both for the experience, though this you can turn around, make it super exclusive, make it very intimate. There's things you can spin with that, but mostly financially. I mean, how many times do you have to perform to get a little bit of revenue, um, that's just not an option. So 
but also those are loyal partners, venues we've been uh, collaborating with from the start. So we also don't want to break up with them just because it's easy. Um, so yeah, we are in conversation with everyone, like what are formats that we can do? Perhaps we can use your space to um, video work that we can later present online. So we don't need an audience, but it can happen in your venue and we can have a little bit of exchange of money anyway. <laughs> Uh, and with artists, we are now looking into, um, we wavered the participation fee this year. Um, so we completely shifted our budget around because we anyway cannot do big openings, parties, stuff like this, uh, bars, foyers, these are not happening. So we completely shifted the budget around the, the, the government subsidies and also most of the private funds have been quite lenient into uh, in, with regards to the, the goals and target goals that you usually have to meet in income or uh, visitor numbers that they said, okay, we understand that's, yeah, we are not going to look at that. So that has been very mm. great because then you have money to spend and mm. you can rearrange things around. Um, so yeah, we try with these little gestures to yeah. make it softer, the, the, the big blow that everybody has been hit by. It's the constant pressure of not really knowing what's going to be in that, you know, in the two, three months, because in two, three weeks, in a day, things might change again. It's, you know, just going back over some of the things that we've been doing, you know, you spend like half a day really carefully going back in and out of an email that you take ages to compose just to get right. And then, you know, there's a news report and then that's scrapped and you're back to the beginning and all these details are so mm -hmm. difficult. When the, and looking at the entire festival, it's almost like an impossible um, kind of goal to just to make all the options, you know, 10 different versions of the budget, you know, um, and whatnot. It's, it's mm. so stressful uh, to know where it's going to end up going. But um, mm. Steve, have you, are, are you still planning to do an autumn, an autumn uh, Prague Fringe? Or what, yeah, what we are. are. We, um, the response from the artists when we decided that, oh, well, we were forced into not being able to continue was incredible. And about 80% of the artists in, initially said, we're absolutely up for it. Uh, and we've got only got 60 groups, so it wasn't that many. And um, so some of them just couldn't because they had other things planned for October. But, um, you know, we're in a lucky position now that we've actually, all of our shops, cafes, bars and restaurants have been open for a week already here. So, you know, things are ticking along, but because of the nature of our festival, you know, we're, we're the English language theatre festival, as it were, here. We don't present a lot of local work. So we're reliant on work coming from England and Scotland, the States, other parts of Europe. So who even knows what's going to happen? such a mess in England at the moment um, and uh, you know we're relying on those borders hundreds of our audience members fly in from all over the world and buy hundreds and hundreds of tickets between them they're a big part of our audience and um, you know it's not even just if we'll if we will manage to have the festival uh, what, and let's just say that the rules are sort of relaxed a bit more by then but how will people's confidence be? So it's not even just, yeah, okay, you can now do this. You can now have 50 people in that wee space down in the cellar. Mm. If that's quite fresh, will people have the confidence to go out and do that? Are they going to be ready to do that? Are visitors going to be ready to fly halfway across the world just because you're allowed to? I don't think so. I think it's going to take a little bit longer for that to happen as well. Yeah, it's interesting. There's a there was a, a company here who, on the Australian sector, did a really comprehensive reach out to all the kind of organisations and festivals and did a comprehensive survey of of our audiences, kind of about the outlook of how they're feeling. What you know, what do they see? Their level of participation has it changed? You know, do they do they feel safe? Do they feel confident? Has it has this whole thing kind of shifted their views and the first, the first wave of results that came back was really positive, you know, that the overwhelmingly amount, amount of people still, you know, will come to things. But I think it will be very different once the rules or the, the kind of structure lands, you know. We've, we, even here in Perth, Western Australia, over the last two weeks, we've done a relaxation, we've had a flare-up, we've had, you know, um, it, it's changing week by week and, you know, I'm not sure... Um, from our perspectives as, as festivals that need timelines and planning opportunities to, to communicate with artists and audiences, 
I'm not sure that we're going to get to a point where it kind of is like, and that's that, off you go. So I think we're, we're now facing as organisations, we're now managing risk, you know, not, not just financial, financial risk in terms of putting shows on sale and, um, you know, having to do refunds and investing in materials and collateral and things, but now it's, it's you know, how do you, how do you ensure that that risk is protecting the artists that are coming on board and kind of committing to doing something. And it's just, it's just such uncharted, uncharted territory, Julian, I'm sure you've, you've experienced more of this than you, than you, than you care to think. Have you had much, um, how's, how's, how have your stakeholders and kind of supporters come wrapped around Brighton after, after this kind of time? Have you found that there's, the government's got more funding support in place. It's like a any kind of relief or recovery funds. Is there something there? Um, well, stakeholders wise, um, artists um, and uh, and venues have been incredibly supportive. Um, the venues have got their own challenges, of course. And, and as an open access arts festival we aren't anything without the artists and the, and, and the, and the venues. And, and so they, 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 are, they are betting the bank on whether they can return or not. And we, we've, we've got, um, and, and they of course have got their the individual um, concerns um, and that there are big, there are venues big and small. So that they each have their different, different challenges, some year round venues, some pop-ups. Um, but uh, generally speaking, it's been it's been very very positive. The support financially um, has been very patchy. Um, the, we, we've we we're very fortunate to have support from a from a, from a main funder who we're hopeful um, we're, we'll will have put together a, a rescue package centrally for, for Brighton Fringe as a, a, a the, the central administration. Um, government support wise we, we were successful with a with an arts council um, funding um, stream and uh, the, the we've had rates relief and things like that as well um, but yeah it doesn't really touch the sides um, when you've spent all the money not all the money but a good deal of the money on putting a fet together a festival and then have to um, press pause on, on it all so it, it's it's put it's an existential threat to everybody involved and, and that, that that goes across the whole the whole spectrum but in the end i'm adamant that our role centrally is there is to be there to support the sector um whatever we can do in whatever circumstances we can do it we should be putting it at the forefront of our our um our mission to to be able to do that and, and it, it it's it's financially not the um not the best solution um you know you could argue best solution is just to shut up shop and, and disappear um but in the end there are the artists who are there at the forefront on the coalface the venues who, who rely on the central central services provided by a festival such as ours or, and it's not just the festival we, we, we're, we're there as a as, as a as a um as a sounding board as a as an information provider as a um as a funding provider as well. So what, what I want to be able to do once we've got ourselves together is to put together um, funding, yeah. whether it be large and small funding funding pots um, to be able to support the artistic community, to be able to put work together, whether, or be, be it in the autumn, be it next year um, and beyond. And, and I, I think that the support that we've got from the stakeholders um, is there because we've been there for them and if we don't if we're not there for them then i think we'll lose that support mm. there was a question came in from youtube that relates to funding and specifically about government or public funding and the question is how are your various government public funding bodies responding have you lost or are you at risk of losing public funding have you been offered more to help sustain the cultural sector so we've been, we're lucky enough in a sense that there's a lot of discussion being had at the town hall in Prague about organisations being able to keep a hold of funding that they've already received, uh, providing that they, um, you know, do some form of rescheduling or online festival or such like and so forth, which is, which is really lucky, which is um, um, 
Um, so for us, it's that 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 part of it's been okay. No no extra funding as far as I know yet. How how are things in Amsterdam? Okay with that. Um, it's similar for the the government funding and the public funding in that, um, like I said, they are lenient towards what you put out there uh, this year. And they just announced yesterday that this will also be still in 2021. So they are thinking long term. There has been announced um, in emergency, uh, emergency pack for the whole cultural sector, uh, for all those institutions that are uh, on a, that are structurally supported by the government. Uh, and and uh, but for, for example, independent organizations um, and independent artists, the, the money doesn't go there. So mm -hmm. you see, uh, I think what you see perhaps uh, at large in society happening, but the, those who have already a precarious position um, feel, feel it even more. Um, someone said to me the metaphor lately um, of we are all in the same storm, but we have different boats and some have a canoe and others have a beautiful cruise ship. Uh, we still all suffer from that storm and it's terrible for all of us, but it makes quite a difference if you're on the cruise ship or on the canoe. And I think that is what you see in the cultural fields and especially also for fringe artists and venues, those other smaller independent organizations or artists, they don't have a buffer. Um, and they also don't have income. Um, so how, and we ourselves are also not the richest of festivals, um, but how to provide them a platform and some safety. Um, yeah, and, and not saying, okay, let's not do it then because then there's no platform. Um, so yeah, it doesn't mean you're better off, but it's a devil's dilemma sometimes of what is the, the what is a good or a bad choice. Mm. Uh, another question, let me get my glasses. Um, what about uh, after the crisis, will you be consider considering keeping some of your online activities going? It's really interesting to be able to follow all your lovely festivals from abroad. Amber. I think, um, I think it's kind of broken down a few walls in terms of accessibility to, to other festivals and other programs. And, you know, I certainly have felt very connected to my ind our industry and our network um, over the last over the last four months, um, more so than ever. And, you know, just in terms of um, not only just making sure that you're all okay and that things are things are going okay, but watching your responses. And I think um the, the online the online element of, of presentation moving forward I don't think is going to go away anywhere anytime soon you know we here in Western Australia are, are facing some real um, real factors like our state border is is currently closed you know people from the eastern states can't come into Western Australia without a two-week quarantine um, let alone international kind of entrance into into Australia how that changed we even had regional borders you know you couldn't move around the state of Western Australia and now we're starting to see those relax but um, there will be a, a very big element of access that we're going to need to consider on how we can make it as accessible as possible to international and national artists for West Australian artists that we want to return to the platform of Fringe um, and how we can break down any of those walls and what those what those kind of issues and concerns are for people to to be able to make the most of this platform that's here for them and if that's having a strong component of online programming and uh, you know a, a space or a range of spaces working with local venue partners and and newly designed other spaces that kind of complement our current reality, then I think this is this is what we're hoping to unpack and, and kind of unlock the, the secret of what that might look like. Mm. Okay. Anybody else want to answer that question? Uh, Julian, uh, do you think you'll do some uh, online stuff next year? I think it's inevitable. I, I think that... The, the, I, I, I think that the, the limitations on travel are going to inevitably mean that um, people aren't 
we're, we're not going to get the the wider um, range of audiences and artists that we've been used to, and that is going to it's going to make for some very um, strong localized festivals, which isn't such a bad thing actually. I, I think to to be pushing the local work is um, is actually really a, a really positive step and, and people are going to be having to think out of the box in terms of how they do things in terms of the digital consumption of that i think that it, it it has been great to have these opportunities like we wouldn't have had this conversation now as international fringe directors had we been just cracking on with our individual fringes we, we, it, it, and and I, and I and i think that 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 has meant that we're now actually in a, in a weirdly more global than ever um, in, in, a, in a different way. Um, Interesting how people have been engaging with our online festival who have never been to the festival. Uh, for whatever reason, they, they couldn't have come or they're too old or whatever, you know, and to, to have travelled and they're really, really enjoying it. And that's a, that, that they've become a big part of the, this actually quite massive audience that we've had. These, uh, I've never been to that. Never, never been to Prague Fringe. And, oh, there you go. You see, I followed can... Rove with Go. <laughs> Check it out. Like, there's one more question, and then we'll uh, have a wrap up. Uh, we've been going for about forty minutes now. Uh, so the last question is: uh, How are audiences responding to online? Can you compare the audience numbers? How are you getting feedback on how do you feel about coming to live performance indoors, outdoors, online now and in the future? Well, that's, there's a lot in that question. Um, oh, and Ellen says there's one more question. We'll just incorporate all the questions. There's currently a serious, a serious concern for UK theatre, particularly in London. Do you think this will ultimately benefit the fringe scene as artists and audiences will look for other outlets? Well, that's a good one. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's just all chip in. And then we'll all sort of, we'll just wrap it up and then tell jokes at the end to cheer us all up. <laughs> Steve, could you tell maybe a little bit more? And I know, Julian, I think you also have some program online this month instead of uh, the program that was planned. How is that going? Because uh, I'm quite curious. We still have to figure that out, of course, and what this will mean uh, according to audience numbers or interests um, at all. After three days, we had almost as many viewers as we had real audience members for the whole of the festival last year, which was just bizarre. I mean, we're going to have to analyze that because, of course, when you you count a view of something, is that just because somebody scrolled past it and it's the, the videos? We, we don't really know. None of us have done this before. So that's an interesting one. We I was really against doing it in the first place. I just thought, by May, everyone's going to be so bored of online content. But then I started to have like kind of like mini watch parties with um, a friend in London. Uh, and we watched the Globe online and the National Theatre and stuff. And it was a really lovely experience to share something uh, live with, which was recorded live, with somebody who wasn't even in the same room. And we had a little interval and a glass of wine. And then, I had macaroni and cheese one night at the interval. And it was just kind of a weird experience. And I thought, actually, and of course, we're never going to be able to replicate how professional the Globe and the National Theatre film these things. But, you know, in our own little way, uh, we, could, we, we could do that. And I just started to think, actually, this, this, maybe this is OK. I'd never thought, and I can honestly say, I don't think I'd watched that many theatre shows online before. Mm. And, and I was kind of anti it. And then we thought, uh, well, let's just maybe do two or three things during the week of Fringe. And then about three weeks before, a month before, I announced to Rosie, right, I want two things at least every single day, maybe three talks, this, that, and the next thing. Let's get Ellen involved. She's, a wonder she's wonderful. She did a 12-hour marathon, all the Fringes are web, I think it was called. Please correct me if I got it wrong. And we just thought, Let's, let's just go for it. And um, the response has been fantastic. And lots of our um, friends, uh, you know, there's two Aussies in the middle of uh, Victoria. They're probably watching right now. Hello, Don and Sue. And they come every single year from Victoria, Australia to visit the Prague Fringe. And they're following all the stuff that's online. I don't think they're getting up at two in the morning to follow some of the earlier things, but still. 
and it's like there's they're here we're all together somehow there is a connection still happening despite the fact that we're not in the same room or we're not in the bar afterwards um uh so it, it's actually quite a buzz um i've i went down i've been down every single day of the festival to the fringe zone i've been putting up photographs and all sorts of things on my own facebook page and uh, you know and people have been engaging with that it's it is very very different but i'm quite enjoying it <laughs> actually <laughs> It, I'm enjoying the buzz of it because the people are getting a buzz out of it. People are engaging. There's been a lot of contribution to our survival fund. Um, if anyone wants to buy a drink, they are available at the link, which we will post up. Drinks <laughs> cost for as little as three British pounds, eight Dutch guilders, for those of you who remember the guilder, and six, <laughs> and six Australian dollars. So it's cheap as chips. <laughs> uh, I managed to get that bit in. Anyway, I uh, how is it going? That's great. How is it going? I, I think for, 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 from our side, it's um, uh, difficult to gauge exactly the the viewers because in, in the um, in the haste of putting it all together, we we relied on artists having their own streaming things so that, that the links go to outside sites because we don't have the functionality on our own website yet to be able to do that. Um, but uh, we'll be crunching some numbers on the on the page views um, as as this month comes to an end, and we'll 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 see what what it, what it's been looking like. It's it's felt very strange to have this going on quietly in the background, and and so I, I see some some of the, some of the acts promoting themselves um, through it as well, which has been great. Um, it, it is a different atmosphere from having a thousand events um, uh, to having, what is it, 40, 40 or so um, online offerings. Um, it, it has been exciting to have that and to know that that's happening though. And I'm, and I'm pleased about it. And I, I think there is a certain novelty factor um, for, art, for, for the artists, for the audiences um, in that happening. And I think to a certain degree, looking ahead to the autumn, there will be a certain novelty factor for artists and audiences as well um, in going into a, you know, a 2000 seat theater and sitting two meters apart. I, I, why, why is the virus only one and a half meters in the Netherlands and it's two meters in, in, in Britain? Is the British virus more strong and you have to stay oh, further away? Apparently in India now it's double that. It's like it's four oh, meters in right. I read that on one of the Indian newspapers just earlier today. Yeah, it's just one up and shit. Um, so uh, yeah, so, so we, there, there are some interesting ideas about repurposing these large venues and turning them into fringe venues, um, and that could be an exciting experience we just need to make it make sure it makes makes some financial sense for everyone involved and, and that that's the, the the crux of the whole the whole issue um i think one but, thing one thing that's true is there's going to be some very very interesting work created in the next 12 months it's, it's going to actually that's what's going to out and i sort of you know we've all sort of thought this in our hearts you know we will out in the end everything will be okay because you know fringe artists are sort of struggling at the best of times and to be in a situation like this amazing work will come out of this incredible work art is always at its best when there's a struggle or some kind of something to struggle against and i think this will will also be the case here i i agree i was thinking about the role our festivals will play on our communities in terms of uh, you know helping people establish life after COVID and its difference, you know, and using uh, festivals as an opportunity to celebrate a return, a return to life. And I'll, I agree, Steve, I think there'll be some incredible, incredible performance that will come out of, um, and ideas and narrative and conversation that will come out of, of, of COVID. But also I think it will, there'll be some work in there that celebrates it and, you know, some work that perhaps was made before COVID that maybe isn't so relevant anymore or um, yeah I think I think we have an opportunity as, as festivals to kind of reintroduce our communities back into a 
a lifestyle that that they already love and support and and enjoy so much and and making sure that our artists are um, ready ready and have work and have had an opportunity to make something to to make the most of that. Mm. Ellen, did we answer all the questions to some degree or another? I think we did. Yes. Yes. <laughs> And I love the ideas that you came up with, that, that you were talking about, um, Alkia, about the like peep show performances and long distance performances and oh, any keeping excuse. your bubble parties. I've written those down. I like them. Any um, excuse to get into a sex club in Amsterdam and use it as a fringe venue. I've been there. Yeah. I know how that Oh, works. God, I've been there too. There, there was the um, <laughs> a puppet show I saw in a, in a, in a, in a, in a sex cinema in the red light district we were watching it at about 11 o'clock in the morning i remember they were there they had um paper tissues on the receipt <laughs> yeah i think we were together for that weren't we uh, julian i i seem to remember <laughs> and uh, yes there's been a few a few good ones but no that was really wonderful thank you all for joining um any other vignettes before we depart well done. I can I can't imagine this would have been an easy time for any of you. And you know, hats to you for making wise, sensible, strategic, and incredibly difficult decisions on behalf of your teams and your organisations and your artists and your, your audiences. I hats off to you. And I hope that um, it all comes around again in a in a nice new way and and does great things for all of you but yeah I've, well done well done friends yes we'll survive we'll get there we'll just have to That's i'm gonna do something as, as we go because I, I can't i can't just sit in this white box any longer i'm gonna i'm gonna finish the conversation somewhere else oh that's exciting a little way of yeah. sunshine yes i can get out this uh, uh, you see, I know we're going to get through oh, this. Here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Live. Is this a view of Brighton? Yes. This is what I said we want. I wanted to do. I, I haven't got. I'm, I'm going to have to climb over here and be illegal. And um, now I'm going to run through this. Uh, we're going to lose them. We're going to lose them. This, and this is, is where the online content tends to fail us is the old internet boundary. Oh, 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 the blue very sky. Brighton, very Brighton. <clears throat> Am I back? You're yeah. back. I'm back. Uh, Wait a minute, that's what I do. It's a rove with Gove. It's a rove, it's a rove with Julian. <laughs> <laughs> is that the, are you going to take us down to the pier? Yes. Oh, that's gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so dangerous here. Lucky the roads are closed. Oh, Ellen's just made a comment. You know, the best in the world. Sorry, everyone. Ah. What a lovely way to end. There we are, everybody. Ah, the seaside. We don't have virtual ice creams at our virtual bar, but we can have yeah. that in the afternoon. Look at that. Fantastic. Beautiful. There we are. What a beautiful afternoon. Needed that. <laughs> exactly. Me too. And I'm a bit out of breath. <laughs> well, oh. thanks again, everyone. That's been absolutely fantastic. Great to see you all. And um, uh, I'll just let press stop. And then she'll let us know when it's off. And uh, we can stay online for a couple of seconds to say goodbye to you.